We can just call it debt. All code is technical debt. It's not on different than any other kind of debt. Paul McMahone will walk us through some details about what, why code is technical debt. Basically every single line, every character, every character is a, uh, a piece of debt that the business now owns. There's like a couple of ways to look at it from a software engineering perspective and from a business perspective. In both perspectives, they are debt. But from a business perspective, it's actually kind of exciting because that code is, even though it's debt, is very valuable. And then it's up to the business to be able to derive the value from that debt. And the way businesses do this is they attract prospects and customers, either a, a consumer or a business. And then, they, the, then you as the owner of the technical debt will lease your debt to those businesses or users and they will pay you for that ownership of the debt because they just want to take advantage of that automation or improvement or betterment or process and workflow that you've developed within that code. So the debt is extremely valuable and you're able to lease that debt to other businesses who are going to be paying you for it. However, uh, as uh, Paul will walk us through some details here that uh, you can generate more debt and code that the business never takes advantage of. And it, you end up with mountains and mountains of this debt that will just go unchecked and just cost, be a more burden on the business itself because the business might not have a way to leverage that debt or they do and they just don't know it. <laughs> There's like a few, a few approaches there on that. Technical debt and software engineering is where we write a bunch of code uh, and we do it quickly, but we do it sort of like uh, either inefficiently to deliver a product to market uh, as, as fast as possible, or we trade off uh, a code complexity to get a more performant infrastructure. Maybe things are going a little slow, but we can quickly write uh, more complex algorithms that bear with it additional debt due to that complexity, but can help the business grow in certain ways in terms of performance. It's, it's really kind of, it's, I, I like to see the two sides of the coin from a technical debt perspective, because from an engineering perspective, we're looking at all this code that then we have to reread because this, you can't keep every single line of code in your head. Uh, so <laughs> you have to, we have to uh, go through every time we want to make a change or an alteration. We need to jump into the code, read the code. Okay, there's here's where this happens, but you know maybe somewhere else in the code base this other thing happens that this line of code relies on, and then you have to go and learn what's going on with that, and you have to be careful at all these complexities that are all over the place that when you modify the code base, you're able to do so successfully without any problems or bugs. However, all because there's this code all over the place, you need to make sure uh, to reread all of that to be able to be in compatibility with that code, and that's the debt part because there's the more code there is, the more code you have to read, and then you're able to modify the code, but it takes you longer to get started and longer you might run into more bugs and things like that. So it's more difficult over time to continue to iterate with larger and larger code bases. From a technical perspective on a software engineering, uh, Paul uh, McMahone describes here as uh, technical debt is the idea that we can gain a, f a quicker to market by rushing software development at the cost of future development. So we slow down future development. You know, it doesn't need to be even the concept of rushing or speed in this case. Any additional line of code is going to slow down future development. One of the things, one of my favorite things when I look at pull requests and PRs, the uh, code modifications that come through the door, I like to see code reduction. Fewer lines of code added than the number of lines of code removed. So we wanna see more code reduction because that is uh, helping future development. You can be technical debt free if you start on a code base that's completely empty. When there's no code in a file and it's just an empty file, that's a fully technical debt free situation that you're in. It's pretty exciting because then you can develop at a light speed. You don't need to worry about any other sort of things to worry about because there's nothing else to worry about in that case. You can focus on just implementing the features that you're building. However, when you get started, that file it's uh, no longer empty because you've written into it. That's technical debt. And that debt will pull down on the speed of development, slowing things down. Now check this out. I gotta tell you, I've seen a lot, hundreds of applications get deployed into production. Every single time the same thing happens. 
As engineers, we've learned a lot of our ability to leverage the technologies and capabilities of languages, such as abstractions. And we want to take advantage of those abstractions because they can help us coordinate different layers of functionality across various files and directories. Every single time I've seen this happen, it has been a catastrophe in terms of technical debt. It, every time you start increasing the complexity, dramatically explodes as soon as you start extending into multiple directories and files. It multiplies, it's a multiplier. And we can get really excited like, okay, if I have this abstraction like this, and then we create all these classes and things, it, it's an explosion of technical debt. I have a really good example. There's this code base that was 40,000 lines of code. And it, it was, uh, it was Go code, Golang, right? Golang's usually a pretty concise-ish language, but 40,000 lines of code for an API, a simple, a simple API. It was very well abstracted, but now, you know, like you'd be going and you'd go in and you'd say, hey, what, how do I, how do I modify this? Well, guess what? You have to modify 20 files in order to get anything to work. And it was very beautifully orchestrated. It was architected well. Any change going forward immediately mandated a significant amount of effort. So you can help manage and reduce technical debt over time by ensuring you introduce the least amount of extra time spent. It's kind of like an anti-pattern. You think, okay, if we have, uh, say, a year to build a wonderful product, which is way too long. That's way too long to begin. But say you have a year. You're going to be building a, an excellent architecture and you're going to abstract fantastically. But it turns out that is completely the opposite of what any business needs. Because what you've done is you've saddled the business with uh, an unsurmountable amount of technical debt. Even though it looks like you've made a something that looks like it's really easy to take advantage of in the future, it, it just, it's not, it's not. It's just really the idea is to keep things as simple as possible. So we're talking about technical debt, which is yeah, a software engineering term that describes code. Any code written is technical debt. And I'm walking through Paul McMahon's uh, detailing of all code being technical debt. Paul uh, is a founder of Tokyo Dev, which is a software developer jobs in Japan for those who speak English. I speak English. So does this mean I can move to Japan and be a software developer? Yes, that's what that means. <laughs> Those are really cool. And there's currently 81 positions available. And then it lists out all the different jobs. Oh, and the languages that we need. Oh, this is really great. Check it out. Whoa, whoa, wait. Oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, I need to convert that, but it's like 8 million yen. That sounds like a lot, but you need to convert that number. Ooh, 11 million yen. So if you're interested in moving to Tokyo and you're a software developer, this would be a really good way to be able to do that. When we're adding features into our software that's usually increasing our technical debt, this will happen every time. Every additional keystroke is gonna be an increase in that debt. However, the business is typically gonna be monetizing that debt by leasing that debt to users or businesses. It's a, a pretty cool business model actually because you have a, a singular source of debt, but you're able to lease that debt to multiple businesses and multiple users, even though it's one foundational debt. Obviously, we wanna make sure that we keep that debt as low as possible because that directly ties to our margins and our ability to innovate in the future for additional features. And it's challenging often to be able to design an infrastructure that isn't overly complicated because it's really easy to do it. In, in colleges and other academic, basically what we learned in school was to take advantage of language uh, capabilities such as classes and abstractions and inheritance. And in the industry and in business, th those things are actually pretty terrible for most of the industry for software. Usually a feature is just gonna be one of a kind. It's gonna be in a set of features though it's not gonna need to inherit or encapsulate too much additional functionality other than maybe data sources, right? It might need a database access, maybe a caching or importing libraries. But beyond that, any additional abstractions will just be a terrible burden on the business. There's an exception, however, in the gaming industry, we typically do have a lot of a one kind of a thing and other foundational structure of entities within the game. So it makes a lot of sense to be able to reuse and leverage and have inheritance and, and a variety of scopes because you'll have a lot of things all over the screen. So in that, that situation, you're gonna see a little bit of different scenarios. Also, typically in gaming, uh, the code is gonna be running on hardware that's localized and it's not gonna be needed to operate in the same kind of fashion as business software. As long as we keep things simple and we don't over abstract, the business will be able to benefit significantly and we'll also have a really good future experience for software engineering teams that are inheriting the code. So as we're adding features or building brand new products, having a simple infrastructure and a 
simple code base, it's going to be far more valuable than any kind of abstractions that we would learn in an academic environment. So if you've went to school for being a software engineer, you will think that code is inherently valuable, but it's actually the opposite. It's a burden for the business, it's debt. Every single piece of code, every line, every character, that is technical debt for the business. Which is the opposite. You think usually it's like, okay, I'm going to be writing a bunch of code so that way the business, no, <laughs> no, any line of code that is going to be a burden for the business. Now the business will do its best to lease that debt out to end users and businesses. So that way it can drive it, the business engine that it's, you know, it needs, the business needs to make money. That's the whole point of it. So the idea is as a software engineer, you wanna write the least amount of code as possible. You wanna make sure it's maintainable going forward. Challenging to be able to step back and say, I can take advantage of all those cool abstractions I learned in an academic environment. But in the business world, we don't, we don't need that. <laughs> It just, it's just not needed. In fact, it will actually hurt the business. You might think otherwise, but you're like, oh, I can abstract this and it will be really easy to add them. Nope, so ne it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. I've had seen it many times and it successfully failed every single time. It always adds far more technical debt. In software engineering, as a business grows, it provides more features and capabilities to its end users. As a software engineer, it's up to you to be able to generate and deliver those features. There's a problem, however, if you're sort of looking at it as, a, oh wait, this feature might not be super valuable, or this feature might be actually pretty good, a nice, excellent feature. In both cases, it might be easy to sort of sit back and just, you know, do, treat it as a burden, but actually every single time it's a, uh, it's an opportunity. What that sounds? Okay. Wait, I think of it like this. I think of it as a chance to be able to write extremely efficient code very quickly that is minimal and it achieves beyond the ask of the product. Every single time it, there's a chance for it. For me, it feels really exciting. So you can, as long as you can connect the dots to the value of the business, then there's this chance to be able to create something that has low technical debt, no abstractions, no fancy code, magic wizardry, just something super duper simple. It's, it's well performant and it delivers beyond all the different features that are, are needed. As a software engineer, how do you avoid technical debt? There's a, there is one way, there's one true way to avoid technical debt, and that is don't write code. You didn't, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't add any technical debt because you didn't write any code. Every single character, every word, every, any kind of, every line of code is technical debt. As we need to add new features and capabilities into an existing product to the next best thing, to avoiding technical debt is minimizing the debt. You can do this by collecting a, lo a lot of requirements across a large customer base and being able to deliver something that works pretty darn good for all of them into a singular feature. And the more you optimize on that, less technical debt overall is delivered. You might find yourself in a situation where a product owner or a product manager will say, hey, you need to do this, you need to add this feature and you have an uncertainty. Like, ah, mm, should we, mm, maybe? And it's tricky because as a software engineer who is supposed to deliver this feature by writing code, which is technical debt, every single line of code is technical debt. Being able to understand how the value is gonna be delivered by the business is critical because it's possible that you can be building additional debt that never gets leveraged by the business. That debt will go sitting there doing nothing, just costing money to the business and it's an overall burden. So part of the challenge of being a software developer is to help understand and align those goals. Rather than just churning out code, we need to be able to understand how these features are gonna be leveraged by customers who are leasing the debt from the business. The overall value of the product itself is also measured by the debt. Though by a significantly less portion, the most, like I'd say like 90, 95% of the value of a product is measured by the revenue it is able to generate. The debt below it is actually not that interesting because over time we know that we can either rewrite, replace, optimize. So actually this is kind of an interesting, even though, you know, as a developer, you need to make sure that you're doing the best job you can by providing value in the business. It's a problem because we often think of it mostly about technical debt. What's the future gonna look like for adding more value into the product? It's gonna be more difficult if that code base gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And often it's, uh, you're not maybe in every conversation that's involved with the, the guidance decision and designing of this feature that will be added into the product. And so it might be 
become difficult to defend a poorly thought out feature because you don't have all, all, the, all the pictures and all the data. So you might be in a tough spot. This sounds terrible. So the best we can do is make sure that you learn as much as you can that's needed for the feature of the product and implementing it or being able to help shape it a little bit differently. So we can make it better, but it takes a significantly more effort and <laughs> time to be able to really understand. And that is part of what it is to be a software engineer.